Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. I need you to do this. Stand up and stand on one foot. Can you do that? Stand on one foot. Balance yourself. Hold your arms out. Try to touch your nose. Can you do it? Are you standing on one foot? Good job. Now, I need you to do two things. Number one, go find a gift that someone has given you. It might be in your room, might be somewhere else in your house, but in just a second, you can pause this video and go find a gift that someone has given you. And then number two, once you have that gift, I want you to set it down and then go find a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil or a marker or a crayon, doesn't matter, it can be very simple. Then I want you to draw a picture of yourself. It can be a stick person, uh, maybe put a hat on you, maybe put, um, maybe put some clothes on you, but draw a picture of yourself. Take as much time as you like, and then when you come back, you can press play. All right, have you got those things? A gift that someone gave you and a picture of yourself. And now I'm going to show you in just a second the Bible verse that we're gonna look at today. It's in the book of Romans, which means that it's in the New Testament. And you'll remember that the Bible has two parts, Old Testament and the New Testament. If you're holding your Bible in your hand and you're looking at it, the New Testament is on the right side those of you who are in Bible encounter in the past will remember that. And the book of Romans comes after the book of Acts and before the book of 1 Corinthians. And even though we call it a book, it's really a letter from Paul to the people who lived in Rome. And so we call it Romans. We're gonna be in Romans chapter 12 and I'm going to share the screen and show you the verse that we're going to be looking at right now. I will read it and then give you instructions on what to do. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. So then, my friends, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you. Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his serving and pleasing to him. This is true worship that you should offer. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. You see that I've underlined a couple of words. Uh, I have underlined on the second line, living sacrifice to God. Offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God. Do you see what you found from your room or from your house that is a gift that somebody gave you? Somebody gave you that gift because they love you and because it may have been a special occasion, uh, but they really were thinking about you and they were thinking about that gift and they wanted to give you a gift that would help you know that you are loved by them. And so in a sense, that gift is a reminder that you are loved. This Bible verse says that our gift to God is ourselves so that we are a living gift to God, which helps us remember that God loves us because we have that gift that we can give back to God. So if we are a living gift to God, that means that the most important thing we can give is ourselves. What's really interesting in this verse 
is where it says, let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. And that means that when God has control of us, first, it means that we are giving God our mind so that whatever is going on inside of our mind is what helps shape what happens outside of our mind. Paul was really smart and he really wanted to help people understand that their relationship with God meant that they could give all of who they are to God. And so I think of it like this. If you are at school and sometimes people get on your nerves or sometimes you may not want to do the schoolwork that you need to do, instead of reacting with your mouth or with your hands or with your body, if you can first react with your mind inside of your mind and tell yourself, this is going to be okay. I've got control of this situation. I can handle whatever is going on. And so we start with our minds because our minds control our actions. And so Paul wanted to help them understand that. And he wants to help us understand that when we give God our minds, then our bodies will follow. So you see that picture of yourself? The most important thing on that picture of yourself is not the clothes you might have on or not how tall you are, how short you are, uh, not whether you can, you're the fastest person in the class, but it's really about who you are. And so that picture is a reminder that you are a child of God and that being a child of God starts with controlling, allowing God to control your mind. And then that will control everything else. So Paul was really smart. Those are good words. But then this next part is where it really gets interesting. Are you ready? This is where you may have to stand up again. So then Paul says, this is verses three through five. And because of God's gracious gift to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you should. Instead, be modest in your thinking and judge yourself according to the amount of faith that God has given you. And then I underlined this part because I think it's very interesting. We have many parts in the one body and all these parts have different functions. In the same way though, we are many, we are one body in union with Christ and we are all joined to each other as different parts of the body. So, Paul says, we have many parts in the one body and all these parts have different functions. Do you remember standing on one foot? Well, if you don't remember, do it again. Are you ready? Stand on one foot. Sorry, my head's cut off there. Stand on one foot and try to balance. Continue balancing. I'm on one foot. Can you stay up? How long can you stay up? Now, If you've got your socks and shoes on, take them off. If you, I want you in your bare feet. Look at your feet. You've got five toes, right? One of those toes is a little bitty tiny toe, your little pinky toe on the right side of your right foot, on the left side of your left foot, little bitty toe. I bet some of your toes are just tiny. Now, why in the world do we need that little bitty toe? Wouldn't it be better if we just had four toes? No, every part of our body is important. And that little bitty toe is what helps you be able to have balance while you're standing on one foot. If you didn't have that little bitty toe, you'd fall over and hit your head on your couch. And so you always need everything that God has given us. And so what Paul is saying is that even though every one of us has a different function 
for a different purpose or different talents, different gifts. It takes all of us to make it work. So you wouldn't think of getting rid of your big toe, would you? You need that big toe too. And so you shouldn't think about getting rid of that little pinky toe, even though it may be so small, it can't even have a toenail uh, because every part is important. And the same thing's true for how we function as a community and as a church congregation. You are watching this because you are part of Auburn First Baptist Church. And so if Paul is correct in that everybody has a role or every part of your body has a role, it's also true that everyone who is a part of the community has a role. Some people are the ones who are up teaching, pastor is up there preaching, others have different gifts that they use in leadership throughout our church, but everyone's important because everyone has a role and you have a role as well. In worship, one of the things that I miss and look forward to when we get back together is you opening the Bible at the beginning of the service. Nobody else does that, but the children. And so children are really important to the life of a church and everyone has gifts. And as you develop your gifts, then those can be useful for God and for our church as well. Now, last part, then I'm going to show you some pictures and tell you a story. Remember about those gifts and everybody has something different. This is what Paul says at this part. So we are to use our different gifts in accordance with the grace that God has given us. If our gift is to speak God's message, we should do it according to the faith that we have. If it is to serve, we should serve. If it is to teach, we should teach. If it is to encourage others, we should do so. Whoever shares with others should do it generously. Whoever has authority should work hard. Whoever shows kindness to others should do it cheerfully. Boy, there's a lot of good stuff in there. The thing I want to tell you about and focus on is what I've got underlined. We are to use our different gifts in accordance to the grace that God has given us. Everyone has gifts and everyone has abilities, even though you may not think so, everyone does, and we should give those to God so that we can help each other. And you've got a lot of gifts. Remember that picture of yourself? That picture of yourself also represents all the wonderful things that you can do and that you will learn to do as uh, right now and as you grow older in the future. While I was looking at this verse and thinking about all of the people that I know who have different gifts, I happened to get a phone call from a friend and I'll show you her picture. Her name is Kathy Gaffer. I've known her for, I guess, probably 20 years. She is pictured right here in her warehouse in Opelika. She started a program over 20 years ago called Reading is Fundamental. And basically, here's the story. She recognized, and some other people recognized, that there were people in the community who did not have children, who did not have books to read. I bet if I asked you right now to go find a book to read from your room or from your house, you could come back with all sorts of books. Well, there are some kids who aren't quite as fortunate and don't have books in their house. And so Miss Kathy, you can see all these boxes of books, uh, for over 20 something years, she has given out almost 2 million books to kids around the state of Alabama, kids who might not have books in their room otherwise. And so this, this program called Reading is Fundamental 
is an example of how people can use their gifts. She's a good organizer. She's a good people person. She's a good mentor to others. And so she has helped organize all of the money that it takes to get books purchased. Good books too, not just books that uh, nobody wanted. These are excellent books uh, that are wonderful for children and they're age appropriate and uh, they help all children learn how to read. And so she lets people work with her in her warehouse to help get the books ready. This is college students who are putting stickers on the book so that when the books are given out, the children who receive the book can have their name written inside the book. This is a picture of her dad who helped start the program. He's reading to a young man who's in a community nearby because three times a year, volunteers in the community would go into uh, daycares or to after school programs and read to kids and help them understand that reading is important and that it's fun. And so they would all use their gifts to be able to share something in kindness to others. There's one book, that's my one of my favorite books, Miss Mary Mack. And that's a happy young lady who received that book that day. And sometimes she gets some help from Albie. Um, and you can see he's behind a sign that says open books, open minds. Uh, and that's true. Then here's another book. Have you ever read that book? The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Another student who is helping to get books ready to go out all over the place. And so if you asked Miss Kathy, hey, Miss Kathy, what are your gifts? She might say, you know, I'm not sure if I have too many gifts, but I'm a hard worker and I like people and I like to organize things and I like to bring joy to others. And I think those are gifts. So you've got gifts too. And what this Bible verse and hopefully what this Bible lesson will remind you is that you've got gifts, that every part of our congregation is important when we use our gifts, and that the best thing that we can give God is ourselves. So that picture of yourself, let it remind you that your gift to God is you. And when you give yourself to God, you show kindness to others in the process. So I hope that you have a wonderful day and I hope that you remember that everyone misses you and everyone loves you. Um, and we want everyone to feel connected while we are away from each other and remember that we will be back together again. And we look forward to seeing you in the future. Have a great day.